This show contains movie spoilers and swearing. I think we've been properly introduced. I'm James Bigglesworth. My friends call me Biggles. Jim Ferguson. Celebrity dinners. I say, you're an American. I heard you chats were coming over. Uniforms on the way, I suppose. The Germans have a fix on us. Come on! Wait a minute. This is ridiculous. Hey, what the hell am I doing here? What's going on? Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bite Size Cinema. I'm your host, RJ McCready. And for this episode, I'm going to be taking you guys back to the year in 1986 to look at the action-adventure time travel movie, Biggles. Biggles in time. So let's play you a trailer and I'll be back soon. Let's move you. I'm James Bigglesworth. My friends call me Biggles. Jim Ferguson. Come on. Hey, what the hell are we doing here? What's going on? You mean that was 1917? Time travel is not unknown in history. Why me? I think Biggles is your time twin. You again? I want some answers. Quick, untie us. Get us out of here before they start realizing you're not a god, you're just an American. This is getting crazier, you know. Debbie, stay away. You gotta stay away. Ah! Come on, Ferguson. I told you I keep going back to 1917. Ah! I have no idea. It's that hole in time. It keeps happening to me. Apparently, the hole in time goes both ways. It opens when one or the other is in mortal danger. Let's show the sausage guzzler what this thing can do. Let's kick some ass. Biggles, the adventure begins one step back in time. And welcome back, everybody. So the synopsis of this film is daring British World War One fighter pilot James Bigglesworth and 1980s low-level business executive Jim Ferguson discover that they can time travel to each other's time period. They tried to stop the Germans from changing the outcome of World War One. Came out in 1986. It's rated PG. It's got an hour and 48 minute runtime. 5.7 IMBD. Could be a little bit better than that, I think. Um, it was directed by John Hugh. Uh, he was also directed a um, couple of films which I like from the 70s. Which Mountain, Escape from Which Mountain. Uh, a film that scared me a lot in the 80s and this was a Disney film which is uh, Watcher in the Woods if you haven't seen that go check it out if you want to be freaked out by a Disney movie uh, also directed um, a police I think it's a British police TV show from the 80s as well which um, some of you may remember as uh, Dempsey and Makepeace um, so yeah he's, he's done some good stuff it was Distributed by United International for $7 million. And it's the cast for this movie is Neil Dixon, Alex Hyde-White, Fiona Hutchinson, Peter Cushion, and William Hootkins. Um, and before I get into the film itself, let's talk about the music because that is standout for me with this movie. It's, it, it's something that 
draws me back. Um, that happened a lot in the 80s with um, soundtracks. I've, I've mentioned that in, with other movies, particularly Kroll, one of the uh, latest episodes that I did. Um, it's got a really good mixture of music by Stanislas that basically does all the sort of background music, the little deep moments that you get in this film uh, with, with Biggles and our heroes. And then all of a sudden you've got music which is really defining the time period like from the 80s where you've got John Anderson uh, he was a front runner from a progressive rock band called Yes he does he does this fantastic score to this film some people might say it's cheesy I think it goes really well with the film it's you know do you want to be a hero uh, it's the track that you hear at the beginning of the film and it turns up throughout the movie um, particularly when there's like a dogfight scene between Biggles and uh, Von Stein. Um, and I think that works really well. So you've got a blend of 80s and you've got a blend of the Stanislas music, which, like I say, just kind of hits on the deep notes in, in the film. And it makes it move along very well with the with the story. So what can I say? You know, it, it's in the 80s. And if you haven't seen Biggles... I recommend that you just put in, do you want to be a hero? Chuck it on YouTube, listen to that. It will just give you the whole vibe of what this film is all about. It's fantastic. And I feel like it really, if you if, if your mood feels a little bit low, that will pick it right up and take it 100%. Um, I guarantee it. So I, I cannot rate that enough. Um, but let's talk about the actual film itself. So this is a... This is a good movie. I think it's uh, it's, a, it's a little bit underrated. In fact, I think it's very underrated. I went to go and see it at the cinema back in 1986. With um, Actually, my mum took me with my sister. Um, blew me away at the cinema, as you can imagine. I think I was around about nine, ten years old. And it's everything that you want. It's a, I say, it's a, it's a proper boys' adventure. You've got time travel. You've got you know germans you've got heroes you've got biplane pilots you've got like a an unlikely hero which is uh jim ferguson you've got the soundtrack which i've already mentioned this film runs at a pace you've got peter cushion in this film uh which is great to see on screen in fact i think it was one of his last movies that he made and for me personally there was actually locations which i can relate to because it's set in london so you the Tower Bridge sequence. Every time I go to Tower Bridge now, I always look up and think, expect to see a helicopter with Biggles flying it with Jim hanging off the side of it. So that's the um, <laughs> the effect that this film has had on me. But yeah, no, it's a fun film. And it's, it's come off the back of um, Rage of the Lost Ark. There's no denying that. And I don't think that the film denies that there's... You've had Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones come out in the 80s, it's done very well. And then you've got Back to the Future, which has got time travel, so the writers and producers of this film have said, let's put a film together that's got all those ingredients, and this is what you got. Um, and like I say, I, th I think it works quite well, it's a, it's a great Sunday afternoon adventure, it ticks all the boxes, and as I said, it goes at a pace. And um, I quite like the story as well, where you've got um, Jim Ferguson, who, let's face it, is a little bit stuffy, as a he's, he's a little bit of a finding himself type of character. He's trying to set up um, a business called Celebrity Dinners, which I find funny. And then you've got his sidekick, which is Chuck, which is played by William Hootkins, is kind of like the comic relief here. And uh, Jim, yeah, he's a little bit stuffy. I appreciate what he's trying to do. And then it turns out that he's a time twin to James Bigglesworth, uh, who is a World War One fighter pilot. So he's the, he's the exact opposite to him. He's a guy that goes out and saves the day and fights the Germans and goes on adventures. But um, what I do like is his actual story of where, as Jim progresses through the film, he kind of loosens up a little bit. And um, I think it's about him actually growing up as a person. By the end of the film, he's actually become someone better. And he um, he realises that he put in a different situation, taking him from the city, sort of stuck up, sort of celebrity life or whatever it is he's involved in. He can actually be a hero. And um, I actually think that's quite apt for today. You know, you, some, some people do their day-to-day -day jobs, 
But if you put people into different situations, who knows who might be that hero out there. So, yeah, if you, if you dig a little bit deeper with this film, it actually, it's actually got a really good story to it. And it's all about one person finding themselves if they're put into a different situation. And um, I think that's a really good performance by Alex Hyde White as well. I think it's great. I think he pulls the character off really well in this film. And then, of course, you've got our hero, which is Biggles, who... Uh, is played by Neil Dixon again plays it really well he's a proper gentleman he knows what he's doing he's a badass he's he's the English gentleman pilot from World War One I. I feel like uh, Neil Dixon is actually a pilot from World War One in this film he wears his jacket he's got his you know helmet and goggles on and he's got that sort of um, oh hello old chap you know stiff up a lip and um, and when he needs to I love the bit when Jim is in the back of the Sopwith Camel and the the gun jams and then he goes, well, one jam it. You know, Biggles won't mess about. He tells him off and he goes, what do they teach you at training school? And uh, that's some that's some nice moments to this film. And again, as I said, with uh, the Jim Ferguson character, by the end of that scene, Jim is actually, he's, got, he's a bit dirty, he's a bit ruggy, he's got shit all over his face. And um, you can see it's part of his development as his character. And that, that's a great scene, actually, altogether, because you've got um, some real dogfight sequences here where they've actually put cameras onto some real biplanes. Um, so that's a fantastic part to this. And then, of course, you've got Jim, who's going backwards and forwards in time with some 1980s lightning that looks, 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 looks like it's just come off from the DeLorean. And I love it where he's like, well, we've got the picture, Biggles. And uh, as he jumps off the plane, he jumps back into his own time and he's into this sort of celebrity dinner uh, function where he's full of um, oil from the plane and he runs off and he goes, I've got to go to uh, London where he um, tells his girlfriend. And let's talk about Jim's girlfriend because she's she is a... She's not. A, I wouldn't say she's a side character in this either, because she has her part to play, which is great. Um, she's quite a strong female lead, and she doesn't take any shit either, um, which I think is fantastic. There's a bit where they find the actual weapon, which is the it's the main plot of this movie. The, the World War One in World War One, the Germans have found a sound machine, which is kind of plausible actually. I think it's like a sort of um, sound that will fry you. And there's a scene there where they, our heroes get captured by this German soldier and um, they get tied up to these poles and then Jim comes out and says, uh, um, you know, don't worry about Debbie, my girlfriend, because, you know, she can fight. And he's like, they look over and then she's, she's yelling at this German and then she goes, and I also have my mace which is like a spray, and then he sprays it in this guy's face, and then she punches him, and then she gets hold of a machine gun. So, yeah, that's a great scene. And let's just stay with this scene right now, because obviously um, Debbie, Jim's girlfriend, has gone back in time with him. I should have mentioned that <laughs> at the start of this conversation right here. But um, you're also introduced to Algie, Bertie and Ginger, who are basically big old sidekick characters. And you get a really good scene here where... They kind of go into like a post-apocalyptic world where the sound machine is like it's like a testing site. And there's a little bit of trivia here. It's the same locations they used for Full Metal Jacket for the Hugh City sniper scene. So it's the same location. And then during this scene, you're introduced to some horror. And I think the film really uses that PG rating because they go into this um, like an igloo, which is like a a bunker that will protect you from the sound machine but then the German soldier is left outside and the machine operates and it's creating this awful noise and then you see the German hanging on to his ears because he's starting to melt and then the machine is switched off and then our hero's coming out from this bunker and then Debbie goes over to the German out of curiosity and pulls him over and then he just his face melts in her hand and uh, yeah, that was pretty horrific, hor horrific for a nine-year-old RJ at the cinema back at the time. But didn't do me any harm, you know. It's just I think sometimes it's, uh, it's good to have a little bit of cotton wool taken away from you. And the cinema did that back in the 80s. And then you've got a scene where uh, 
Biggles meets Von Stein. He's actually been captured whilst trying to go out and take another aerial picture. And I love this scene because, again, it just creates a little bit of character from Biggles and Von Stein, where Von Stein is basically saying, oh, it must have been the great Bigglesworth. And every time Von Stein tries to sort of put Biggles down, Biggles always just plays the Von Stein character down. So they do a little bit of a toast, and Von Stein comes out and says, to the gods of war. And then Biggles says, to peace. Like that, and I think it's just great. And then um, Biggles manages to escape. And he has the opportunity now to kill Von Stein. And he's got a gun and he's pointing at Von Stein. And he says, I've got the opportunity to kill you now, old chap. But that's not how we do business. So then uh, he just kicks Von Stein down to the floor and then runs away. And it's almost as if Von Stein is basically thinking, I wish you just shot me. But it's like... Biggles is too much of a better man to do that and I think again it's like this film as much as it's a a boy's adventure and it's all fantasy but again as a nine year old I took, took that away because I thought that's that's a really good moral that's a good that's, that's the type of person that I want to be um, which is great if you can get that from a film. And when I talked about the pace of this film you probably get to around about an hour and you've already had uh, Jim jumping back and forwards, you've had aerial dog fights, you've had a standoff between our heroes with with the sound weapon and Von Stein as I, I've just mentioned and then you've had Jim, he's trying to get away from the police in his own time, he realises he's in trouble and then Jim jumps back in time again and he comes across a police helicopter and Biggles has now gone back in time into the 80s, which I think is great. It's great how that sort of jumps between the two. And as I said, just when you think you've seen all all of this, it's like the film's really building up well. You now get a scene where Biggles and Jim capture a police helicopter. And it's fantastic. It's just like Biggles comes out and says, what is this device? And, he's, and Jim's like, you've never seen a helicopter before? And he says it's like a flying windmill. <laughs> and you now got my favourite scene from the movie where Biggles gets into the helicopter, he starts it up and he's trying to get it flying. And then Jim's going, what are you doing? You don't even know how to fly it. And then Biggles comes out and says, if you can fly a sop with camel, you can fly anything. And I think that's just great. It's a, it's a quote that I use even today. And um, now you've got a scene where, again, you've got the... Um, John Anderson song, Do You Want to Be a Hero, that kicks in. Um, you've got Biggles trying to fly the helicopter. It's going all over the place by Tower Bridge. You've got Jim hanging onto the side of the helicopter when he gets in. And then um, Biggles says, I think I know how we can get back. And I think it's something to do with if one of the characters, if they're in danger, then they will swap time. So Biggles uh, tries to crash the helicopter into the Thames, but before it does that, it takes them back into uh, World War One. And now this is where Biggles comes up with a plan, and it's quite a clever plan, where he says that there's a sound device, or there's a speaker on the side of the helicopter. I'm going to use that to fight against the sound machine. So I'm going to fight sound against sound. And now you get a cool scene now where he's hovering in front of the helicopter. The sound machine starts up, and then it reacts with this weapon and then it blows up and so now you're drawing to the end of the movie uh, our heroes have achieved what they needed to do uh, Biggles takes the, the helicopter back to his friends or his um, air base and then this way he finds out that he's got his love interest uh, Marie she gets um, shot by Von Stein from a biplane and um, Biggles runs out in anger he gets a machine gun and a grenade and he points it up at the plane throws a grenade up and then he blows up Von Stein. He then returns back to Ferguson. As I said at the beginning of the show, you know, Ferguson was a little bit stuffy and now he's tu he's turned into a hero and he's really loosened up and it's like he's kind of enjoyed this role of being a, being a hero himself and he, these new time friends that he's found with Biggles. And um, Biggles says to him, thanks for your help, Ferguson. And he goes... He just, just he jumps off the um, helicopter or the plane. Um, he then falls into the Thames back into his own time. 
And then you've got a scene now where he's getting married. Jim's getting married in the 80s. It's a proper 80s wedding. And as, uh, as he's about to put the ring onto Debbie's finger, you've got the lightning that comes out and then he goes into... Uh, what looks like South America and then you've got Biggles in a cooking pot with algae, burnt and ginger and it's a bit like Indiana Jones and uh, Biggles goes quickly untie us before they realise that you're not a god and you're just a guy from the 80s and then um, Jim unties him and he goes oh you might, you guys might t- taste quite nice with a little bit of uh, salt and pepper and then they run out and then Jim goes Biggles, where the hell are we going? And then that's it. It comes comes to the end, so it called, leaves it as a open ending. And then again, you got the soundtrack from John Anderson again. Do you want to be a hero? And it's great. And that is it. So that is Biggles. So I knew uh, I knew I was going to get round to doing this movie at at some point. I was going to talk to you guys about it and my my love of this film. But it's you know, what can I say? It's the eighties. It does everything you want it to do. Um, there's some films that I've uh, seen at the cinema that have been made for 100 200 million dollars everybody's rated it and uh, I've walked out of the cinema and I thought oh what a load of old crap didn't do anything for me at all and then you've got a film like this where I just keep going back to it so it's I'm not a big fan of um, uh, films that do very well at the box office don't get me wrong if they, if they deserve it it's fine but I think it should be more to do with, you know, has a film been put together well and is it a lot of fun? And um, I'd watch Biggles any Friday, you know, Friday night. It would then entertain me and I'd walk out the cinema and I'd feel pretty good about it. So there you go. That's the way I feel about this film. (laughs) You know me if you've listened to some of my other shows. If you're a new listener, welcome to the show. But... um, that's how I feel about some of these films sometimes, so there you go. Um, but if you, like I say, if you haven't checked it out, watch it. Um, if you don't feel like watching it, I definitely recommend having a listen to the soundtrack. It's cheesy, it's 80s, but it's a whole whole ton of fun. So I hope you enjoyed the episode, everybody. Uh, I'm going to close the show now. Uh, a little bit of admin for the show. I'm a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network, so... Please go and check out all the other shows on there, including my other show, which is the Mystery Vault podcast. I've just released a new episode on dragons, so you want to go and check that out. Um, where can you find the show? You can find it on Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube, and several other places. If you put in bite sized cinema into Google, it will take you to a listening platform. Also, if you want to contact me, I'm on Facebook. That's the best place to contact me. And um, what's coming up next? I've got the next show is going to be Clue, the film Clue from 1985. And I have a guest on the show, which is Court Syops from Cinema Syops Podcast. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. So um, I know that's a film that he loves. So we should have a lot of fun with that. It's always good to have Court on the show as well. Um, So that's it, everybody. As always... Keep it bite-sized, keep it safe, and I'll see you soon. enjoyed this show then make sure you check out the other great shows on the legion podcast network like cinema psyops cinema beef devour the podcast duncan and Bo come correct exploding heads horror movie podcast friday the 13th get slayed the hell Ming power hour hello this is the doom show hero hero go show kill the cast underwater kaiju from outer space jerry hates action legion after dark mental health obsessive cinema discourse Pick Six Movies, the podcast by the cemetery, the podcast on Haunted Hill, the Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a wide spread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. 
horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.